everybody and welcome back here at Leica Pro on Adobe Live. I'm your host, Claudia. Super excited to kick off this other episode of Leica Pro. And if this is the first time that you're joining us here at Leica Pro, well, this is the perfect place to be if you're starting a new business or maybe you want to spice up your social media or learn new fantastic techniques um, like a pro. So here we're going to, we've done so many episodes already. So we're kind of on the second season and we've been talking about creating a logo design, editing your holidays photos. There is plenty of wonderful tips that every uh, Thursday at 9.30 Pacific time are going to be here for you. So I want to say, first of all, hi in the chat. I can see so many wonderful people already here with us today. Norsh, Lamont, Blees, Garrett, Andres Oller, Anika. Nice to see you, Sean. Uh, wonderful. So, Cody, and um, thank you so much. Lovely to see you here and uh, keep your eyes peeled to Cody's uh, name because she's going to be uh, sharing so many useful links. Sorry, the chat is going so fast. So here, as I said, it like a pro, we're going to have fun and learn professional techniques in order to spice up your content like a pro. And it's time to get started. Today, we're going to be working on an invitation and uh, I forgot something really important to say about Leica Pro. You're going to learn how to do all this fantastic creative content in uh, within 30 minutes. So it's time to get started. I keep my eyes on the chat. So if you have any questions while I work, feel free to put a question in the chat. And if you're watching from YouTube, the best place to head now is b.net slash Adobe Live. That's the place where I can read your comments, say hi to you. I'm always very excited to learn where everybody's from, where everybody's watching from. I'm currently based in uh, Manchester, UK. And uh, the background that you see over here is actually a photo that I've taken and edited during a session of like a pro uh, around here the north of England but lovely to see everybody here again Biola um, please thank you so much for joining us and as Andreas say happy Thursday everybody but let's jump into my screen real quick in order to show you what we're going to be working on today um, so I'm going to start right away with uh, a preview of the final output and then we're going to walk through how to get there from the very very beginning Karen in the house. Nice to see you. Make sure to go and check out Karen. And since Karen is here, I'm actually going to uh, take a moment uh, to um, uh, give a shout out to Max and all the wonderful Adobe Max speaker. Karen is, uh, has been a, a wonderful guest here at Adobe Live. I had the pleasure to host him and is also going to be a speaker for Adobe Max. If you haven't yet, make sure to head on max.adobe.com. The hype is real. That's the creative conference that is going to go uh, live from the 26th to the 28th of October. It's free, so it's an occasion not to miss, to meet professional, literally, uh, inject creativity in your brain that's going to be worth a year. I love the real event, but all the online events uh, since last year has proved as amazing and wonderful as the real life one. So again, it's online, it's free, 26th to the 28th of October. Go ahead and register. All you need is your Adobe ID. And you also be able to find my sessions, which are 300 and 351. But also, as I said, Karen, which is here in the house, is also an Adobe Max speaker. So let's get started here with the invitation. So that's uh, what we're looking to build today. Um, and I thought that it was very exciting to give you an idea on how to create this sort of content uh, where we have uh, also some text that which is under an image. Uh, in fact, if you see here, I'm going to 
hide the background. We have a two background repeated. We have almost the text that is like on a track. I know everybody started school or is back to uni. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought the best way to celebrate this time of the year is to celebrate it with a party. So it's time to make an invitation. Uh, the size that I'm going to be using today is a, a Facebook advert. But hopefully, if we're going to have time, I'm going to try to squeeze in, maybe using this example, how to resize it for other formats, like, for example, an Instagram post. So let's go ahead and create this from scratch together like a pro. Uh, head to spark.adobe.com if you want to follow along or feel free to uh, chill and then watch later because this is going to be on a replay. So you can just join me now and then watch afterwards uh, and follow along what afterwards. So once you head on spark.adobe.com, log in with your Adobe ID and from there, all you have to do is to click on the plus in order to create a new project. And here also you can start with different templates. I'm going to first of all to go ahead and select the size of the canvas that we want to have a look at. In this case, as I mentioned, is a Facebook post. And right away, Sparks give us, uh, first of all, uh, the, the correct size and resolution for a Facebook post. But most importantly, already, we can have access to wonderful templates. So I always think that it's in, you know, insightful and exciting to have a look at the different templates because they might be inspiring you to create a different way um, or a different uh, creations that you've never done before. So make sure to go ahead and and uh, and, and start for a template. If that's what, what you want to do. Simply click on create from this template and all the data and all the text will be editable. So there are plenty of templates here. You can search uh, and that's a fantastic starting point. But I want to show you here how to start from scratch. So first of all, I'm going to start by creating a, a background image. And in fact, all I have to do here is to click on the canvas in order to uh, automatically access the edit background options, which will appear on the right side of your web page. From here, I'm going to click to choose image and the photo panel will open up on the left side on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and click on find free photos because who doesn't like free photos? And I'm going to write the word confetti because that's the first um, image that I want to look at. I want to have a look at It's like a colorful background. And uh, what doesn't speak party if not confetti and colorful, colorful, joyful um, little injection of color here. Perfect. So I see all I've done is just simply clicked on the image and right away we have the image placed in our background. Uh, and the first of the, our background, the first step is already completed. Now we want to add more images in order to start to build up all the record player. We want to make sure that we talk about, you know, the fact that it's a party. So all I'm going to do there is to choose key element and key images that will relate to the topic. So the topic is back to school. So we're probably going to put some books or something related to school and something related to party. So first thing that I'm going to go ahead there is select again photos, find the free photos and perhaps what's a key element of a party if not a DJ. So once I select a DJ, I really fell in love with this image here, which again, all you have to do is to click once and here it is. Now, if we go ahead and click and drag one of the corner of the bounding box, we'll see that we can uh, resize the image. Uh, but what happens here is that some of the background of the image is going to go ahead and cover our confetti background. And that, that's not really pretty. So um, how do we make sure that we can erase all the, or mask some of the parts uh, of this background? Well, the first thing we want to do with the image selected is to click on remove background. And you'll see that Spark in just a few seconds will analyze the image and then will remove part of the images. So what happened here, it removed our black area exactly as we wanted, but also some of the white area. Not to, no, that's not a problem because after this automatic selection, we can go and refine our image. As you can see here, I'm going to zoom in into my screen. There is the option to customize in order to restore, which means add again, or erase, which will mean uh, take away more elements. So the first thing I'm going to do here is select the size of the brush and I'm going to keep it quite big and I'm going to even even bigger. If you go back into the image, you actually see a preview over there and make sure that I click on restore. And from there, everything that is selected in red is the mask that is being hidden. So all I have to do is pretty much paint inside with the little plus icon. So I'm restoring all this area of the image. So everything that it goes from red to green, it means that it's been added back to our 
image just like so and I'm gonna go ahead here and do a very rough selection of course with more time I will suggest to really zoom in into your image in order to catch any details for example here it looks like we have some detail missing and then again you can also go back into the arrays mode and make your brush smaller and if there is uh, any portion of your image that needs to be deleted you can also do so uh, by using the delete and the erase option once you are happy click on done which is the little tick on top and you will see that now the image is already finalized as we want if something like that happened that means that we missed some bit Again, not a problem. Everything is customizable. Click on edit cutout. Make sure to restore again. And here you'll be able to paint in all these details that we missed before. And this is going to be stay editable all the way through our workflow. So if at any moment we want to bring in on arrays any sort of other areas, I can see more here. Um, we can do so at any time. Oops, make sure to click on the right button. So in this case, restore. And it looks like we got uh, the majority of the uh, area of the photo that we want. Now I'm going to go back to photos. And as I said, I'm going to try to mix the key elements. So we have music, but also uh, school was the other keyword. So school and party. And uh, the first element that really brought, got my, to my attention was this you know, pile of books, because that really speaks school to me. And again, same thing, select the image, Spark will bring it right back, click on remove background, and then you can go ahead and in this case, boom, it's done, you know, one click, depend on the images. Um, and once you're happy, simply click on the done button. And something else that I want to do here to really play with that contrast in between um, the confetti and the party mode uh, of the books is to apply a filter with your image selected. So make sure that you select your image. You can click and drag to resize this as you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and select on filter. You can choose any filter you want. Duotone will have the opportunity and will give you the opportunity to choose two different colors to which the image that will apply to the image. And you can, of course, customize it. One will be apply, applied to the uh, highlights and the other color to the shadows. Uh, here it is. And you can change it simply by clicking on one of these two colors. But what I'm looking for here is the grayscale, just kind of to, to match up our uh, vinyl player. And I'm going to also use the flip horizontal button in order to flip our books and just bring it back to the side here in order to kind of uh, cover. I actually kind of like it on the other side because we can probably see more that they are books. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and make it as big as necessary in order to cover our um, image. And all I'm trying to do here is to really create uh, a nice composition that will give me the opportunity of um, really play with both of the books element, but also the vinyl element. And as you can see, all I have to do here to toggle between an image and the other, it's simply click on it. Fantastic. So it's time to add some text. In order to add the text, all I have to do is to click on the text icon, text tool located on the left side of the page. And then uh, all we can do is simply select any of the uh, example if you want to do so. So I'm looking to achieve one of these curved text. So you can simply click once the text will be added. And if all you have to do is want to double click on it and edit the text. But what if you want to customize it and do it from scratch? Let me show you to do that. Click on add your text. Uh, the text that we're going to be using here is back to school. And now what I really I aim to show you in this um, like a pro is to uh, actually how to place an element and create a mask almost as if we were working in Photoshop, but you don't even need to know how to work in Photoshop because it's super, super easy. Right. Fantastic. So once you're done with the text, all you have to do is to select a font of your choice. Um, I'm going to go with a font here that is called Nexta uh, Rust. So let's see if we can very quickly find it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to settle here it is, Nexta, Nexta Rust Slab Black. I'm going to change the color also to black. And then I'm going to make sure that the text is in a curve. How to do that? Very simple. Can you see this little uh, icon here? It gives you the option to create magic grids and alignment. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select the inverted semicircle. Boom. And we did it. You can always click and drag in order to uh, resize your element and also 
uh, use one of the arrows to tilt them. Now, to uh, have the text under the book, very simple. All we have to do is to go here to our layers and bring the books on top. And we already achieve one of the overlaps. But how do we achieve the overlaps for the actual playhead of the vinyl? Well, I'm going to go ahead and select the vinyl image and then click on the plus in order to duplicate. You can also use the control D or command D on a Mac. I want to make sure that our images are aligned. And then I'm going to go ahead and select edit cutout. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select clear cutout. So we start from the beginnings and auto. If you remember when we did the auto, it was quite simple. It was kind of getting rid of all that white area, which is what we want right now. All we want to have is to click keep the playhead. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and erase all these other bits that we do not need from our image, just like so. And then click on done. All we're left to do now is to make sure that we do align the play yet, but most importantly, that we bring it on top of our text, just like so. And I know that there are different elements, like for example, here on top of the book, again, click on edit cut out, and you can get rid of all of this area because we already have it at the bottom. Uh, of course, make sure to zoom out so we know that we uh, have erased pretty much all the area that we don't want, and we just keep the one that overlaps the text. So now we have this effect of having the play ad and the text, just like, you know, we're DJing with the text. Super cool. All right, we got three, four minutes to go. So let's go ahead and add more text here. Um, perhaps here we can use some of the template just to go a little bit faster if we want to. Uh, if not, we can start from scratch. Let's see, let's do it from scratch once more here. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to write again back to school. And again, I'm doing this just because I want to make sure that uh, my text is visible. So we kind of reiterate the theme. And I'm going to go ahead and in this case, use shape in order to give it a background and click on shape and then on the little shapes icon to choose which shape uh, to select. I want this little band that goes from edge to edge and also want to make sure that my text color is the same text or the same color of the vinyl. And in this case, for um, the font, I was looking for a font called Economica. I don't know if we're going to actually have time to find it. If not, please go ahead and select. Oh, I kind of like this text as well. Nice and heavy. Uh, the example that I used before was Economica. Termina is also, oh, they're all, I, I love all of these fonts. Like really got spoiled of choice over here. Uh, those are all some of my favorite fonts. Uh, just make sure that you select something that is nice and legible. I'm spending way too much time on this font, but I really, really like all of them. As you can see, you can go ahead and select as many as you want. Uh, fantastic. I'm going to settle with objective MK3 and I'm going to give it, give it a size of 64 at the moment. And also if you click and drag here, you'll be able to put the text in one line. But what if I want more space in um, for my shape? Again, here you'll be able to give a little bit pretty much like what is called padding on website and you can resize it as many times as you want and of course reposition it. Now I'm going to add a few more elements into my uh, design here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because I want to add more text. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate in order to add another line of text. And I'm going to call this one. Let's see. I'm going to write here. It's a party. Here it is. Now, having two different text box will allow me to distribute the text as I want. And because I already have the shape, I don't need the shape underneath, but make sure to select the right color just so we know that we can actually read it on top of the black. And what it's missing here are a little bit of icons. So let's go ahead into our icons option and let's select uh, party because that's what we want. And I was looking at the icon. They're all very, very fun. Let's see if I spot back the one that I was testing out. Um, is like, here it is. I just find this icon so, so cute. You can just go ahead and resize it and then you can place it on top of our little black bar over here and then duplicate it, flip it over just like we did before for our books and click and drag in order to reposition it. And you can add as many icons as you wish, uh, just like so. Um, for, for example, I'm going to add another one over here and I'm going to use this one in between 
back to school and it's a party. Uh, now, make sure that you select the right elements before you start moving things around. Otherwise, as you see, you might end up moving the wrong element, <laughs> just like I did there. And of course, you can zoom in and resize appropriately, uh, just like so. So I'm going to make this text a little bit smaller. We can see that it's 55.8. And I'm going to make sure that both of the text are the same for consistency. So we're gonna have 55 by eight for it's a party as well. And if you see in literally, you know, we're pretty much done. All we need to do here is perhaps to add a date. Again, I'm gonna create a copy and by duplicating and creating copies, um, this also allows me to have more consistency when uh, working with my uh, template. Again, here, perhaps I'm gonna use something like that and make the shape a little bit bigger. And what I need here is a date. So our party is gonna be on October 28th at the end of max, it's gonna be a bash um, 2021. And let's write, I can write something else like free entry. Perfect, and I'm gonna align it to the left. Fantastic, so we can also make a little bit bigger if we want and the shape smaller. You got the gist, we're pretty much done uh, with our um, with our invitation. You can place this wherever you prefer. I just kind of like to place it here at the very top. Uh, I think something that it was missing and maybe we can just use this template in order to do it real quick was just the date. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the date. I have used one of the template of um, from our text templates for the actual date. And let's see if we can actually place it on top of here and change the color of the outline. Uh, if you want to, again, set the outline and then set the text to transparent and set the color of the outline uh, to the white that we were using here. And again, look how useful it is. We can actually drag that under the books. So it's now uh, covered and we still have an example of the date there. Fantastic. So we're pretty much done. Uh, all you have to do at this stage is to export your file and maybe we don't need a 2021, so otherwise we cannot read it. Um, let's see. Just want to make sure that we got the right bit of the text there. So just going to give it a few spaces so until we get the right date. That's a little bit of a trick to get the text that we want in the right place. Fantastic. So if you ever end up moving some of the object here, it looks like I moved uh, my little playhead. Uh, don't worry, you can always bring it back, whatever it was. I'm going to zoom in here and move it. Again, my goal is just to cover the text. And we have our date, we have all the information regarding the party, our invitation is ready to go out to all our friends. So all we have to do is either click on download and here you can choose a PNG or JPEG and then you can download it to your machine or also you can go ahead and share it. And once you click on share it, oops, that's first the download, I'm gonna play this on my desktop so hopefully it's nice and fine to hear. You can publish it or you can make it as a template so people be able to use it. Isn't that fantastic? Now, um, happy birthday, happy early, early birthday to Khaled. Well, fantastic Khaled, happy birthday. And you can use these tricks to create your own invitation. All you got to do is to select the right images. Now, real quick, I know that we've got 50 seconds to go, but if you wish to resize this image into, for example, an Instagram template, all you have to do is to click on resize and then select the size that you wish. If you wanna, if you're looking for um, an Instagram post, you wanna go for a square size. And as you can see, the canvas will be resized. All I will suggest you to do here is to Alt Shift and select a different element that you wanna uh, move together. That will be so much easier for you to then you know, select it and click on group. Uh, and again, I think we missed this other image. You can keep grouping your elements and then you can resize it and move it around. Uh, of course, you can always have access to your layers here at the bottom. So, you know, it looks like uh, the little text we got, got a little bit lost in between, but you got the gist. We don't have enough time uh, to do these other um, uh, these other formats as well, uh, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is and how quickly in 
it is to resize it using Spark. Uh, fantastic. So that's our end product. I look forward to see what you guys do. Feel free to share it on uh, Facebook. Nice and easy. We just created a mask. Super, super cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, one big shout out. Go ahead and make sure to check max.adobe.com and register is an event not to miss. It's the creative conference free for everybody and that's going to be a party for sure and I, we are all invited all we need is our adobe id fantastic lovely to see you here don't forget to stay tuned there is so much fun coming through here at adobe live full day as usual full week as usual happy thursday everybody it was a pleasure to say good morning to all of you and i will definitely catch you soon but that's everything for today for me go and grab a glass of water and come back for so much fun more fun here at adobe live bye